two, one, go! Okay, checking connection. Seriously? Okay, you're live now. I love how it tells us. How is the sound on Facebook? Hello, hello, hello. That's not on. What's not on? Mike's not on. The mic's not on. Mm-mm. It is. On. Oh, that oh is. it is on. Why was it sounding so far away at first? Did you hear that? Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay. It's actually really oh, loud. Oh, Jasmine Buckles is on. Who's that? It's actually really loud. I'm going to move it right here. Oh, okay. So, we're getting, I mean, we're, we, we're starting a little early because we got to test our, our things. But, um. And we got to do it so that you can watch us look like silly people. Goose eggs. There's somebody out there. I got it. I love it. We need to have big windows. We need to have big windows, you guys. So that way we can have people watch like the Today if Show. If we could just have people cooperate and not say anything for the hour, we might be actually be able to have an audience, but I have a feeling that that wouldn't work. Or a big window so that way they can scream all they want. Right. Like so how they anyways, do in the Today Show um, in, the, in the back, like... What's that? You know, like in the Today Show when people are Yeah, like, when they're like doing stuff. With the signs. You know, they have actually, they have people out there because they want to make sure, they have people out there like controlling what they hold up oh, and, really? and stuff because, I mean, humans. Anybody could do anything, we'll yeah. We'll be silly. We'll be silly and stupid. So, oh, we have some stuff. Hey, Bill, how's it going? So, today, you guys. We have a mother load. We have a mother load. Of course, Steve went out and um, had a chance to. Take a look at a, a Boy Scout uh, lot, and I say Boy Scout because it is Boy Scout. Can you hear us okay? Yep. Make sure everybody can hear us. Um, if can, you guys can't hear are us, you seeing comments? What'd you say? Can you see comments? If I get close enough. Okay. Well, live. you can see, you can see them on my phone. They're coming up pretty oh, decent. Okay, good. Hey, Bill. So um, we start. We pull up a little early, of course, and people are popping out. Look at that. Look at Facebook. It's popping. It just five. jumped up to five in two seconds. So we're talking about Boy Scouts, which is now called Scouts in general, because they allow girls in, and we'll get to that. Um, we're going to be talking about Boy Scouts, we're going to be talking about um, uh, Girl Scouts, yep. and then we're going to be trying something new, because we're, we always want to try something new, so we're going to segment. Yep. Segment, and don't mind my voice, I, today's my first day back from work to work, from being very, very sick. Um, sinus infection. Mm -hmm. So, you know how that is. Always. So, so anyways, if I look a little sheeny. Really? What? When I had it over here, it was you so... You can't hear? It was so loud. Can you hear us better now? Can you hear us better now, Steve? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, we're getting thumbs up. I think we're good. Okay, good. Um, so, and... Uh, so anyways, my first day back. So yesterday was at Captain and Conversation. We had it at, at um, Lincoln Yard. And then uh, I was down for the count Friday, Saturday, pretty much most of Sunday. Monday, I went back to work at Caffeinated. And then today, first day back here. Thank you. So it's been a fun day. It's been a fun couple of days. So we're going to talk about scouts. We're going to talk about voting because today is primary vote day. Heck yeah. Voting for primary. Um, so we thought we'd give you a little bit of a history of voting and show you some stuff that we have, which is not a lot, I'm going to tell you. That is why we're going to concentrate a lot on scouts, because there's stuff I didn't even know. And you know that scouts are a fraternal order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's for children. Yep. Which is pretty cool. I honestly think it's a really good thing for children to be a part of, because, like, I was a Girl Scout for a while, and... They did have some decent things that it's beneficial for children to learn, um, whether you are in Scouts or if you are in Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. And the one of the main four pillars um, that are at least in Girl I'm Scouts, um, I should have grabbed it for Boy Scouts. I don't know if, uh, if you grabbed that? this or not, do the Scouts as four pillars. But for women, uh, for the Girl Scouts, it is STEM, life skills, outdoors, and entrepreneurship. So when did the Girl Scouts start? The Girl Scouts actually were founded in between the time of 1912 and 1913 officially mm -hmm. by a woman named uh, Juliet Gordon Lowe, or Daisy, as a lot of people call Daisy her. Daisy started it. Daisy started it. And she founded Girl Scouts in the U.S. in 1912, but she really imagined a movement where all girls could come together and embrace uniqueness. 
So she also started it because Boy Scouts would not allow girls into it, Exactly, right? and she felt like it really wasn't fair for um, boys to have an opportunity to, one, learn certain things, um, be a part in of, of a, a community, mm-hmm. and um, three, to, to also just learn um, and to go through all the opportunities that Boy Scouts did offer to boys. So Boy Scouts started in 1907. Wow. And it was started in Europe. It was not an American institution to start with. Wow, okay. It started in Europe. Uh, but because you started with Girl Scouts, I'm going to show you guys this. Check this out. This is a 1930s Girl Scout pin. Uh, pin. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So this is shortly after it started. Isn't that fun? 1930s Girl Scout lapel pin. <clears throat> That is so crazy. You don't come across something that old because we have a ton of Boy Scouts ones to show you, but when you ca- talk about Girl Scouts, it, it, you don't find that much about it. Right. So, again, I, I'll show you close up. Look at this. 19. And I, I feel like it, if you were a Girl Scout, you probably kept cool. that. Isn't and that's that probably why you're not or cannot find a right? lot of Girl I Scout know. material. But that is so cool. But then, you know, the Girl Scouts went out and they... Um, did everything Boy Scouts did for the most part, right? So this is Girl Scouts. Wow, GS, that's cool. Right? This is GS Girl Scouts. Right? I wonder if that was the original Girl Scout logo that would be imprinted onto cookies. Now it looks a little different and it you has a face is? in it. Is it a cookie tin? No, it's a cup. You know I love things like that. That's <laughs> so cool. It's a cup. It's it's a cup that you can close up. Boy Scouts have them as well. That's Scouts so cool. And so when you're done, you close it up. Put it right in your, in your sash, your sash. Yeah. yeah. In your sash. Yeah. I love that so much. Oh my so goodness. those are some of the Girl Scout things that we have. And we have a few more little things. But, um, of course, the most prevalent is Boy Scouts. Mm-hmm. Boy Scouts dates back, way back. So, I mean, some of this stuff is really cool. Because it's not called Boy Scouts anymore. It's called Scouts. Mm-hmm. Because girls are allowed in it now. Um, but look at this. This is an older cut from the 70s. And it says, Detroit's best investment, scouting. Isn't that cool? Detroit's best investment, scouting. I, I al- love it. I also would like to add, since we're on the topic of the name Scouts and uh, mm-hmm. the difference between Scouts and Girl Scouts right, right now, is that whenever there was a question about when or if the name should ever be changed for Girl Scouts, mm-hmm. Julia said, ask the girls, ask the troop. Don't ask me because it's their troop. Mm-hmm. And so that's when the girls decided that they would like to change their name to Girl Scouts from Girls Guide. So oh, it used I didn't to be, know there was. It was Girls Guide. Yep, it was Girls Guide or Girls Guidance, uh-huh. um, and, and that was set into stone for to be Girl Scouts in 1913. So a year after it was founded, it was then changed officially to Girl Scouts. Cool. So I don't know about you guys, and a lot of you guys who grew up in the 70s and um, or the 80s back was the Boy Scout, a Cub Scout, an Eagle Scout, something. I was a, I was a Cub Scout and an Eagle Scout. But um, I didn't go much further than that because my life changed it when I was 10. But <laughs> Cub Scouts was originally, um, the Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts was al- originally 11 to 18 year olds. It was originally 11 to 18 year olds. And Are you going to talk about Cub Scouts? Is that on that little list? No. Well, yeah, but I'm telling you, this was back then before all those other Scouts. Gotcha. Happened. Okay, sorry. Okay, so it started with Boy Scouts. And Boy Scouts, 11 to 18, 1907, the first experimental camp organized by Robert Powell with 20 boys in um, the United Kingdom. It was a huge success. What kills me... What's up? It's your mom. Oh, hi, Mom. What kills me about that is the fact that from 1907 to literally 1922. So, 07, 17, so just maybe 15 years, right? It went from a group of 20 boys to 31 nations. Wow. To 31 nations. That's how fast it grew. That's Because it's a good thing. That's how fast it, it grew. So in 1909, Scouting for Boys was translated into five languages. Wow. Five languages. In 1909, um, in, um, the first Scout Rally happened in London with 11,000 Scouts. So 1907, you had 20 Scouts. In... 19, where'd it go? 1916? No, I just lost it. Oh, in 1909, so 1907, 20 scouts. 1909, 30 or 11,000 scouts. Wow. 
I would say that is a success. Was there a specific um, purpose for this rally? Well, I think it was word of mouth. Sure. Oh, for well, the purpose for the rally was to probably gain more people, attraction more to... attraction to it. But when you jump from twenty to eleven thousand in a matter of three years, yeah, that's crazy. Um, or two years, I would say that's an enormous success. That is a crazy amount. Now your husband. I decided to him because I didn't see him pop on. So in 1916, uh, uh, Cub Scouts was started. Okay. And that was for boys up to the for boys up to the age of 11. Okay. So because of the success of Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, so they wanted to start the kids younger, right? Sure. And I'm going to throw in my first did you know here in a minute because we're going to we we. Did you knows are the best part, right? The did you know? And we just like stopped doing them for some reason. But this did you know is going to pertain to this. Okay. Okay, so um, 1916 Cub Scouts were created, boys under the age of 11, supported uh, by publication of the Wolf Club's Handbook. There's one over here. Is it, that's the bear. That's Cub Scouts. Look for a wolf there. Wolf Club Scout Book. Because of the Wolf Club Scout Book, and you're going to see a ton of books come out here in a minute because we've got every book from every decade there is. Because Steve, Steve um, doesn't just buy small, he buys it all. Right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Guys, I have to show Jason this. I'm sorry. What am I looking at? Okay, that's nasty. They're ah. talk I think they're talking about a cat. Yeah, they are talking about a cat. So... <laughs> So, in, after 30 minutes, we'll talk about it. Yes, right. <laughs> so, anyway, so the Wolf Club book, the Wolf Club BSA, Boy Scouts of America, started the Cup of Scouts, right? And we have those in several different uh, times. The Rover Scouts were formed in 1918 for older boys, which was changed. Rover Scouts, I think, were changed to Eagle Scouts. Yes, and, that's But true. I could be wrong. I'll have to look and nope, see. Nope, that's true. Okay, so, and then the, in 1920, the first World Scout Conference happened. So, let me go, because this is where it gets crazy, right? And we're going to show you these books in a second. Where did my did you know go? Who knows who William Randolph Hearst is? Why does this sound so familiar? Hearst Publications. Hmm. Patty Hearst. Ah. Uh. Okay, so, R Hearst, right? Because... Because the person who created the Cubs, the Boy Scouts was a newspaper mogul, right? Okay. He was a newspaper mogul. That's what he did for a living, and then he wanted the Boy Scouts. So Hearst, of course, um, William Dickinson Boyce, the man who founded Ameri the man who founded the American chapter of the Boy Scouts, was a Chicago newspaper man. A Chicago newspaper man, right? Um, another three named newspaper man. New York's Hearst, William Randolph Hearst. Okay. Okay. Um, a competitive soul in May 1910. In 1910, okay, two years after the Boy Scouts was founded, period. Right. And the year, the same year that the American Boy Scouts were founded, mm -hmm. um, he founded his own youth organization called the American Boy Scouts, ABS. Okay. Not to be... Confused with the Boy Scouts of America. Okay, so ABS is different than... Than BSA. Okay. Okay. So, in May of 1910, he founded his own youth organization, the American Boy Scouts, ABS. His group went on outdoor trips and volunteered, just like the BSA lads, but he included firearms for his boys. Okay, so he... So, Hearst who had a rivalry with Winchester as it is, decided that he was going to arm his kids. That's crazy. Okay. So the BSA represented, or wait, here we go. They had mock battle drills, and the boys shot each, at each other with blanks in the real guns. Isn't that shocking? Imagine. So you give a bunch of um, 11 to 18-year-olds real guns, you put blanks in them, and then you have them go shoot at each other. That's hilarious. Although that's not much difference than like... BB um, guns or paintballs? Paintball. Blanks don't hurt. Paintball hurts. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, the BSA represented by former Supreme Court Justice Charles Hughes eventually sued its militaristic counterpart and received an injunction 
preventing them from using the terms Boy Scouts, Scouting, or any variation of Scouts. Hmm. Full disclosure, Hertz Magazine Media is Popular Mechanics' parent company. So, f- so far, we've never been asked or allowed to bring rifles to work. Fair enough. Touche. <laughs> so, I just thought that was interesting. That, yes. So, Hearst being so, and those of you who don't know, what William Randolph Hearst owned, he, I mean, he has the castle in California. Oh, yeah, it's a castle in California. Oh, like that his you home? Can visit. Yeah, that you can visit. It's a oh. place to go visit. Um, actually, rumor has it that he, his, um, his, uh, his battle with Winchester is his family caused the Winchester family to go, what, la- the Winchester uh, lady, the surviving late uh, wife, to go crazy and build that house. What? I was just seeing who popped on. Oh, I thought somebody said something. So if you, and you know, tell us some of your cool, put in there, tell us some of your cool, um, Scout the, facts. Boy Scout, uh, things. And, you know, if you have any great stories about Boy Scouts. Yeah. Or Scouts in general. But I thought that was an interesting thing. So apparently it didn't go over well because I don't believe that group even is around anymore. More, yeah, right. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. You know, and later, I, things come around because two decades later, his granddaughter ended up getting kidnapped and forced to learn how to use a rifle to rob banks. Dang, isn't that crazy? Patty Hearst. Small mm-hmm. circle, huh? I do have here, since earlier you were talking about the tiers of scouts in general, mm-hmm. uh, for Girl Scouts, if you are a daisy, you are between the ages of five and six years old or at least in kindergarten. Brownies, you're between the ages of six to eight years old or at least in one to third grade. Juniors are eight to 12 years old, four to sixth grade. Cadets are 12 to 14 year olds, nine to seven. And seniors are 14 to seven or nine to 12th grade. They do follow three, the three C's, which is still prevalent today, which is courage, confidence, and character. And earlier, Jason brought up the, um, the, the handbook, and the first thing in the Scouts handbook is to always read your oath, and we have the boys' oath right oh, here. Oh, do you want to read it? You want me I to? Do, yeah. I, okay. Do you want well, to girl, read it? no, girls are allowed in the, the Scouts now, so it's the same oath, I'm assuming. Um, It's different, actually. Oh, is it different? It is, So I yes. know Daisy and Carson are probably watching or will watch, so, tell, so make sure you guys tell us the newer oath. They're both Scouts. Honestly, this one's very, very cool. Um, It says, the Scout oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God now it's applicable to say your your own religion yeah. um, to God and my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Interesting. It's short. It is short, which is good because they're for kids. The girl's oath is very long. You know, you can understand more than mine. <laughs> so I'm going to show as we talk about things I'm going to show different books because we have so many different ones mm-hmm. but this is a Boy Scouts A Foot in France A Foot in France so this book let me see if it has the date in it maybe on the back page because they used to put those in the back did you know that um, girls right. can join Boy Scouts but you have to be between the ages of 11 and 18 years old that makes sense. This does not have a date in it. That sucks. And that was as of February 2019. So anyways, I'm going to say this one's old. <laughs> I can't tell by the date. But check that out. A foot in France. Isn't that cool? I mean, this is a double collector. So somebody who collects Boy Scout stuff, somebody who collects things from France. Because even though it's in English, it's about their time in France. So it's pretty cool. It's by a heart... Uh, Herbert Carter. Then over here, what else do we have? Oh, you know what? Troop activities, which I really would like to cover this one because mm-hmm. there is something specific that was going around. Um, and the reason, main reason why um, a lot of girls wanted to join Boy Scouts was the, was the stigma against the fact that a lot of people, no matter if you were male or female, felt like Boy Scouts gave more opportunities and had more opportunities for people to do things outside and to earn cooler and different, better badges. I do like, um, I do like a coverage of this book only because it literally has, like, for example, this teaches you how to 
press flowers, how to take leaves from outside and to print them onto paper, how to make artificial bird eggs, how to make a compass. There's just so These many. These are badges too, probably. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. These were all badges, mm -hmm. and if you if you accomplish this, you probably would get like um, like a like a MacGyver badge or something MacGyver for, badge. for being it. able to like uh, b build a compass. They they were very intricate, and now mm. being the age of twenty five and looking back at all the Girl Scouts, like there were already an infinite amount of patches when I was a Girl Scout, and now that I'm an adult, there's even more patches that you would have to get for okay so this is weird okay so the first 10 years of my life i was raised in white cloud michigan right uh, with my father that would be between grand rapids and muskegon kind of uh east uh right in the middle but east and it was it would go nuego uh white cloud baldwin and so forth and so forth. This book is from Baldwin. Nice. Okay. And the last name is Smith, which is half of my family up there. Oh, is this but one where he didn't finish the... Smith is... Oh, I don't know. There's a book we had over here, and he didn't finish so the stone number. So, this is um, Den Chief's Den book, right? Boy Scouts, 1951. Isn't that cool? So, back then, you would put your information in it, right? right. And I'm not showing information of somebody's personal information, but you've got... This is um, Den Chief, which is Carl Philip Brown Gray, Den Chief. Then you've got of Den 3, Pack 194, the Den Mother, Mrs. Anderson, uh, the Den Dad, William Warren Smith, uh, the Cub Master, I cannot read, Ed Anderson, and he is in Beach Street in Baldwin, Michigan. No zip code because it's pre-1962, you guys. Wow. I love it when you have these things in here, and it's got pictures and stuff. But isn't that the coolest thing? Because not only do you have history here, but you have the history of the person who used, used it. Used it. Isn't that? It gives it so much more I feeling love that. towards it. Because, look. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, what, what, what does the list of that say? Well, let me see what year it is. First, real quick. So this one was 1973. I was and two years old. That's a list. For There's a list in here. So this is what this is volume one of this book, this scouting book here, as you can see. But there's a list in it. List of items I need. Cool. Can you read that out loud? For BS me? volume one. So Boy Scouts volume one. Boy Scouts handkerchief. The Boy Scouts handkerchief. Look at that. The Boy Scouts handkerchief. Then we have the Boy Scout. Oh, we have a pennant. Can you have me one? We have the, the pennant. We need the pennant. This? Yep. Nope. That's it. Right there. Right here? Yep. So we have the Be Prepared Boy Scout pennant. This is probably way older than the one that he wanted, right? And there's another. That's probably more it. The Jamboree. The This one is 1957, so it's still older. But here we have a pennant. And then troop number and that I don't know. The con the con condensed strip. No, cor corne corno? Corno. Strip. It's the strip that goes across. The mm. strip. Oh, like a sash, but yeah. different. Yeah, and then the BSP strip, and then the side. So he made his list, and look, they're all checked up. I love that. And I also have a Isn't list here cool? of what they would make all the troops carry on them if they were going backpack camping. Uh -huh. So I almost had all of it. You would need to have certain things for like your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but here are just some of the things that they would need to carry. Stewed or rod prunes, stewed Ooh. peaches, grilled bacon, biscuits and jam, hot chocolate, pancakes, and hot chocolate. Your other teammates or troops members might have boyan, Cheese sandwiches, meat sandwiches, raisins, apples, punch, French onion soup, carrot sticks, and instant pudding. I'm skipping over a whole bunch of them. And for dinners, they would normally have spaghetti, corn cakes with sugar, instant pudding, macaroni and cheese, and grilled lunch meat with baked apples. And I also found this here, and it's called Challenge Number 4. I feel like this is a very odd thing to make troops do, but... It says a sensitive instrument has dropped in the center of a volcanic area on an alien planet. 
The ground in the center is too hot to touch, so using spars and ropes, conduct a device to walk one patrol member to the area and retrieve the instrument in return without either or any member of his patrol touching the ground in the marked section. Provide the patrol with, twel with two 12-foot spars, one 8-foot spar, three lengths of lashing rope, four 50-foot ropes, and two 20-foot ropes. And I'm going to come up and show you guys what that looks like. Which I feel like this is so crazy to prepare these children to go in and grab something of a active volcano. Sorry, I'm gonna get off of this right away, but it's on there. Uh, Dawn said our son Eric is an Eagle Scout, straight up from a Cub Scout. Great experiences and life skills taught. Agreed. Awesome. So when Steve got this set, wasn't there something that surprised you, Jasmine? They're here somewhere. Oh, yes. Now I can't remember what it is. Yeah, you do. Buckles. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. So Steve was going it's through. here somewhere, and I can't find them. He was going through a plethora of um, photos, and they were all Boy Scout-related photos. And in this plethora of photos, he found some that the Scoutmaster and I share the same last name, same spelling, same everything, which is very odd. Because my usually when I see my last name, there's always like two H's or two L's or something different. But this is spelled all the way down to a T. So if you're watching, let me know if they ever answered you back. Because all I right. want to know if they know. Those pictures are here somewhere. Maybe I'll find them. But I do have some postcards and stuff of Boy Scouts. Look at that. He's feeding a deer. That's so cute. Isn't that cute? I like how Look big their hats were. He's feeding a deer. Isn't that cute? I love that. So we have all this stuff. So one of the things I want to uh, show you that I thought was really cool, there are a few things that I need to show you because I have never seen them before. Number one is a Boy Scouts camera. Okay, so, and this is a pull-out camera. Look at this. It's got the Boy Scout insignia on it. And this is a uh, bellow, a pull-out bellow camera. And even, the, even the, the holder has the Boy Scout emblem on it. So there must have been a patch right there must have been a patch for it so here we will i'm not going to open it all the way but i'm going to show you that on the inside bellow it also states the boy scout emblem and the both boy scout totem so there would probably be somebody who walked around there on the shelf above the front computer i'm looking i don't see them Okay. Well. All right, we'll find him. Yep. But um, but isn't that the coolest thing in the whole world? I've never seen this, so I can see this little kid walking around with this. You know what I mean? Going, stop, let me take your picture, Say let me cheese. take your picture. Say cheese. You know what I mean? This is the coolest thing ever. These are rare. You do not find these. I have never, ever seen one. So if you guys have seen the Boy Scout cameras like this, let me know. Because these are cool as, as can be. And we have the, the case. Case, yeah. Right? Another something cool that I thought was really, really cool was the Boy Scouts of America first aid kit. Now, these are what you would kind of see for a first aid kit. Look, it even has the thing here. So you can put it on your belt. That's so cool. Right? So you can put it on your belt and carry it around. So you would have a medic, right? I'm sorry, Steve. They're not in your mailbox either. Mm-mm. But inside, it still has everything in it. And when you find any type of, I don't isn't that cool, Don? So when you find any type of um, first aid kit and it still has all the original stuff in it, that's cool to begin with. But look here by Johnson & Johnson, it tells you these are what should be in here for the Boy Scouts of America. So you would have to be able to use this and everything in it to get your badge, I'm assuming. Do you have the little white one too? Yeah, I'm about to show that yeah, one. Yeah, that one's cool. So, you've got this one that your medic would carry around with you. But if you were going out for the evening, you would have this. This is Johnson & Johnson. And this is a typical Boy Scout personal first aid kit. So this is what you would carry on you at the time, right? So when you open it, it's got everything in it everything that you need these are the coolest things in the world because you just don't see these all the time 
These few things. But their full contents in it either. One other thing. Before I get to the weird books. Official Boy Scouts. in the Look at this. In the package. Official Boy Scouts. We've got a double and a single. Official Boy Scouts. Isn't that cool? Oh. What? I was reading the box. Oh. And it's got the telegraph in it. So this is what you would be, what you would learn. Do, 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 do. Morse code. This is what they would learn Morse code on. So I doubt they learn Morse code today. But look at this. Isn't that cool? And what I love it because not only that. Is dash the silence? So you, it would be like. No, it's a length. How, and how many. So it comes with the instructions on how to use it. To me, this is super cool because now not only do you have the item, and this is probably 1950s, if not even earlier than that. Does it say on there? I would say earlier than 1950s just because the bottom is cardboard. 1948. 1948. This would teach the children how to use the telegraph and send SOS signals. Yeah, it's I wonder so if they cool. still do that today. Let me know if you have scouts or if you are a scout master or something. Do they still teach you... Uh, telegraph, do they still teach you SOS, how to communicate using telegraph? There's a bunch of comments. Uh, we read them. Did we? Mm -hmm. So these are the coolest things ever, you guys. I love that. Yeah, I just like how it also gives mm -hmm. you this up here because I was always so very in intrigued by exactly how to spell out um, Morse code items. And you know, these aren't horribly expensive. These are 25 bucks. This one's only 15. That one's only 15. In the original box. Some people just like to put these boxes and this would be 20% off. So some people like that. I mean, can you imagine that sitting up if you're a scoutmaster or would you be so cool. or troops you have this sitting up in your so office. So nostalgic, especially like if you can mm -hmm. teach somebody how it worked as well. I love stuff like this. Do you have anything about Boy Sky Scout or Scouts alums? No, go ahead. Here I have for I'll show books while you do that. Cool. Uh, for Girl Scouts, there is a network of more than 50 million girls and women that are just part of Girl Scouts. Um, the majority of women NASA astronauts are or once were Girl Scout alums. Three out of three women who have served as U.S. Secretary of State are all Girl Scout alums. We covered the four pillars. Here's the best thing. So what makes Girl Scouts so popular is the fact that they have never changed their recipe for their cookies, except for maybe a couple of things to make mm -hmm. it more like gluten-free friendly cookies. and things like that. This book is 1938. The top list of current cookies in 2024 are Thin Mints, Samoas, and then Tagalongs. But nearly 700,000 cookie entrepreneurs Samoa, participate the in the Girl Scout cookie program, and that is the largest girl-ran entrepreneurship program in the world that is ran each year. Young women get to experience self-esteem. Girl Scouts thrives, and they feel more confident about themselves. This is a really cool fact that I felt like was really important to talk about today. 67% of girls that are in Girl Scouts uh -huh. believe that they are leading purposeful and meaningful lives versus the 54% of girls that are not in Girl Scouts. They said the same thing about Boy really? Scouts. Mm -hmm. You know, five president. You know, 12 people walked on the moon, right? 12 men walked on the moon. Well, 12 people walked on the moon. 11 of them were Scouts. That's lit. Isn't that hilarious? So, songbook, 1963. You guys, check it out. 1963 songbook, and all of these songs are very, you know, cowboy and Indian. Yes. <laughs> they really are. Hail, hail, scouting spirit, western song, the cowboy sweet bye-bye. Uh, did we just live in the cowboy era? What's going on? Um, Onward Christian, Christian Soldiers. Soldier. Um, Quartermaster Store. That's lit. You know, Three Jolly Fishermen. LOL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pink Pajamas. Do you happen to have any myths or facts about scouts? And these are probably some questions and myths that I have to debunk for some people. Go ahead. Myths are Girl Scouts will always be allowing or plan to allow boys. Mm -hmm. No, they no, do they not, not and will never have plans of opening that up. Mm -hmm. Research shows that girls learn best when they're in a well-organized, designed, girl-oriented. So what are they saying? That boys are just a mess? Yes, oh. unfortunately. Um, boys are just a mess. You're not allowed in Girl Scouts. But yet a girl can go into the Boy Scouts. Because we're going to teach them things. Oh! <laughs> Girl Scouts.
adults don't <laughs> offer as many up, um, many outdoor opportunities. Mm. Starting in kindergarten, Girl Scouts have to earn badges and outdoor skills in order to um, move up in the ranks. Mm -hmm. So even if you are, um, what is that, a daisy, mm -hmm. you have to earn your all of your outdoor badges before you can move on to a brownie, which honestly I think is pretty cool. Because So can, did you go back ways? Because you know that the, when Girl Scouts first started, it was homemaking. Yes. It was all homemaking. It was all homemaking. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that pertained to being outside mm -hmm. until it hit, like... 1960 and then they started going out yeah kids were like um we yeah. want to learn how to start a fire it was true beverly hills well how can i be a homemaker if i don't even know how to start a fire outside? Ever how see am I beverly like hills oh i watched the movie with um with diane from cheers huh okay yeah it's good shelly long it was fun so i can tell you this that there are there are only four countries there are only four countries like the four people who are watching us there are only, <laughs> I'm kidding. You're so funny. Like four countries um, that do not allow Boy Scouts or Scouts of any kind. They're normally to ter to tor to totalitarian. Yeah, to tell however you say it. Totalitarian. Yeah, countries because they consider them to be uh, resistance. Because this is I thought was cool. Between two world wars, Scouting continued to flourish. What? Well, let's go back up. So, in those countries in which the Boy Scouts were not allowed, or the Scouts were not allowed to form, they still did, secretly. They formed secretly, and they were considered the resistance. Is that, would that be illegal? Oh, yeah. And that was considered the resistance, you guys. So, um, they were actually instrumental in helping other countries help over not win world the world wars but they were integral in helping advance so they were just influential they were influential in the world wars because they were secret societies that were part of the resistance mm, okay. in those countries um and then in occupied countries and in those totalitarian regimes scouting continued in secret with scouts playing important roles in the resistance and underground movements. I guess I should have just read it. <laughs> um, and one of the, the things that I thought was cool was during World War II, Boy Scouts sold Liberty Bonds, or sold Liberty Bonds. They That's were going door to door, door oh. selling Liberty Bonds. But it wasn't just the Boy Scouts. This is where it gets funny. Dr. Seuss also went door to door. It said the Boy Scouts and Dr. Seuss went door to door selling. Oh, um, like they did it simultaneously. Isn't that hilarious? I love those little tidbits. So in 1947, World Organization of the Scout Movement was granted general consultative status to the United Nations Economic and Social Council, meaning they became known throughout the, the country as a, a paternal organization. So I wonder if in that moment there was like some type of in writing. That oh, there, of, I'm sure there is. So what I, that's really cool. I wonder if that's yeah, how it comes We should have pulled that. that up. I didn't think of it. Um, Scout Movement General Consultant. Uh, in 1960 and 1980, many countries gained their independence, resulting in national scout organizations joining or rejoining as members of world organizations of the scout movement. 1980 to 2007, scouting re-emerged in every country where it had existed before World War II and started across newly independent countries in the Commonwealth of Independent States following the Cold War. Mm. Um, Scout Movement celebration, uh, celebrated its 100th anniversary by returning to its roots in the United Kingdom for the 21st World Scout Jamboree, which is where all the Scout troops come together. It's the big Jamboree. And there's different Jamborees that um, you, can you can, like Michigan would have the Michigan Jamboree. Right. The Detroit could have the Detroit BS, uh, Boy Scouts of America, BSA Jamboree. So you had... Uh, regional, city, uh, national. national, world jamborees, and each of those jamborees were huge events. And then when did um, when did it go from Boy Scouts to Scouts? Two thousand and uh, oh, I'm so sorry, Boy Scouts to Scouts 
was, I believe, the around the same the time. The PSA, the Boy Scouts of America, dropped the boy. 2019. Dropped the boy from BSA, February and 12th. it's just the Scouts now. And, yep, and then um, you were able to uh, join the, the Scouts, but you had to specifically be between the ages of 11 and 18, and that's just because, again, certain things that they do in Boy Scouts well, then was Boy Scouts, now as Scouts, was a little bit more dramatic than it was in Girl Scouts. So yes, you guys might go rock climbing, but there might be a little bit, couple of extra cues that come along with being in a Scouts that it would be different for girls. Here's something interesting for you. So 2020 to 2022, Scouts around the world showed the movement's resilience by taking action to support their communities and adopting a global restrictions through virtual and at-home programs the 2020 the global youth mobilization was launched in an effort to support the development of young people in po in a post-pandemic world post in a post-pandemic world imagine we we've had two of those i know and so i mean they keep going they keep going big six youth organizations which is comprised of world organizations of the Scout Movement, World uh, Association of Girls Guides and Girl Scouts. Oh, there's two different. World Al Alliance of Young Men's Christian Association, World's Young Women's Christian Association, Internal International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, and the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award. So these are all organizations that have assisted, helped, been part of wow. the Scouts. That's a lot the of The Red people. Cross was not derived from being a Scout. So The Red Cross has been around forever, people. So I have a silly question, and I don't know if this pertains to it, but I think the Scouts did have something to do with it or worked alongside them, Hands Across America. Oh, probably. Um... I have my did you know? Well, at least yeah. one of them. And then we're gonna we're gonna do another did you know? And then I'm gonna show you a few more Boy Scout stuff. And then we're gonna talk about Voting. the other. Voting. Yep. So on this day in 1963, a gang of nine people stole 2.6 million pounds um, of banknotes off of an English train, which then turned into the giant dispute of the Great Train Robbery. Very basic, I know. But and still. Yes. Cool. This next one is really, really cool. I feel mm -hmm. like Steve will really like this one, even though he probably already knows it. This day in 1876, Thomas Edison received a patent for his Mimogram, which is similar to a Nina, copy machine. Mimo. Mimo. Mimogram. <laughs> and I'm saving my last, did you know, for right before the show ends. Okay. Are you done with that one? Yep. All right. So a couple of things I want to tell you. Well, let me tell, tell you a did you know first. So the movie Fight Club, right? Yep. We'll talk about Fight Club. With Ed Norton and um, Juliet Lewis and... Is it Fred? No. Oh, his name escapes me. Are we talking about the... Is there a, a newer one and an old no, one? No, there's only one. Oh, the Brad Pitt. It, yeah. Is it Brad Pitt? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, so, the Fight Club, there's a, there's a line in it. Where Ed Norton says, one of these days the world's going to be owned by conglomerates. It'll be Planet Starbucks. And did you know that in every single scene in that movie, there's a Starbucks cup? That's so cool. Starbucks paid for that. It's a lot of money. Oh, I'm sure it was. But, you know, we got all sorts of stuff, you guys, about Boy Scouts. We've got can the you belt buckles. I mean, you can see the plethora down here. Some of you can. I'm sure. But there's books piled up. There's paperwork. There's all sorts of stuff. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this yeah, is, it's a compass. But when, when they would get this, just know that the boys would have to put it together. It didn't come in this box. It was loose. And in order to earn your compass badge, you had to, one, put it together, and two, it had to work correctly. You had to know how to use it. Yep. And it also here even has, like, a how-to, because mm -hmm. I'm assuming you probably have to calibrate it. I'm oh, not probably. sure how. I mean, there's more than I can show you in an hour's time frame and still talk about other things. But some of these buttons I had to show you because they're just killing me. Look at these buttons for Boy Scouts. Oops. Look at that. Oh. Oh, and I dropped it. It's right there. But they're so tiny to hold. Do you know why the Boy Scouts <laughs> handkerchief is so large? Look at that. Look at these little Boy Scout buttons. Isn't that cool? Go on. Do you know why? Why what? That the boys 
uh, the scout's handkerchief is so long yeah. and large. Right. It's because at, in order to earn your um, health and safety badge, you had to learn how to use your neckerchief or square cloth to make a caravot badge, like bandage. To, yeah, to, 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 yeah, to tie in. I thought I was going to say that, but um, I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to. This is honestly so cool because it teaches you how to, to wrap up and treat so many things just with your neckerchief. Like, it teaches you how to use it and tie it around your head if someone mm -hmm. gets poked in the eye. So That's honestly so cool. All through the 80s, everybody was in, was talking about Boy Scouts. And here is, we've got these little buttons that are Garfield, dressed as a Boy Scout. Isn't that the coolest thing? Dressed as a Boy Scout. How fun is that? You gotta love that. And we got a few of them. And here's one. Look at him. He's doing the... the Scout's that. Honor. The Scout's Honor. That is... Is it three scout. or two fingers? Uh, he's got two. Two? Mm hmm So, I'm not going to lie. I'm too old to remember my scout times. So, <laughs> so anyways, I got a fun did you know, then we'll move on. Okay. What time is it? We got 15 minutes. So, Minnie Rippington. I'm going to ask this question first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if anybody can tell me, Minnie Rippington, who is her daughter? If you can tell me who her daughter is. Tell me what song Minnie Rippington... Cody, where are you when we need you? What song Mickey Rip, uh, Minnie Rippington, her number one hit, what it was written for. Okay, so Minnie Rippington was a singer, and in 1975, she wrote a song. I want to know why she wrote the song, who she wrote it for. And if you can tell me the name of the person she wrote it for. I can just hear it in my head right now. All right. So, we've got so much scout stuff, but we're going to talk a little bit about uh, boating, and we were going to do, we're going to, you know, we're splitting the show. Yep. And um, because even though I could go on for hours, but some people get tired of hearing about the same thing. The Deal time. with it. Oh, I want to show you one more thing. One more thing. These are super cool. I have a tear in my eye. You're so funny. Okay. The scout insignia posters, right? So this is what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. These are cool, aren't they? It's so cool. I'm going to hand them to you. Okay, be yeah. prepared. Oh, they're all be prepared. Well, that's just not fun. Can I have another one? I thought they were going to be. Well, because that was the Boy Scouts. That was their number one thing. Well, they I thought they were going to read something. Well, they, no, they didn't follow like the three C's or anything. Their thing was just have your shit together and be prepared. Be prepared. These are all be prepared. Be prepared. Oh, your friend got it right. What? Your who? Was, your only black friend got it right. Who? <laughs> my one is only black. Well, yes, honey, Maya Rudolph is her daughter. But <laughs> what song am I talking about? And who was it written for? She said it. Oh, I didn't read that. Loving you, yes. And on the album version of it, at the end of that song, you can hear her go, Maya, Maya. Aw, I love that. And I, I love the fact that I learned that, that Maya Rudolph was her daughter in a special that we watched on um, on singers from, I don't know what it was, but they were, uh, maybe it was a special on, on um, children of people you didn't know sure. type thing. And when, when they put Maya Rudolph next to Minnie Rippington, you can clearly see so, that, yeah, they are, that they are related to each other. But I love that idea. And that song was hit i mean it was huge no, success yeah, for literally her. it was huge huge yay and i oh, was gonna I find a, a mini rippington album but we didn't have one oh, and i just watched a music video today for the first time and i thought it was so cute mm -hmm. she had like little baby's breath in her hair yep okay so now it's time to speak f spit facts about voting because today's primary like voting to day wow that does not look okay i know but it's scouts no yeah it's just the, it does not it's look... just the first glance of that it looks very <laughs> and that it's that's very why i was odd. like what does that look like to you mm. so remember that if you come in and you buy some of this scout stuff the pictures aren't in color guys the pictures aren't in color and uh there's a lot of things that people don't like today if you glance it. at it, it looks like something completely no, different. No, but they talk about chiefs and Indians and all oh, this type okay. of stuff, too. Well, and they, you know what I mean? So, they just remember that it was a different time. So, the 19th Amendment and the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution ratified in the 1920s and states that the right to vote cannot be denied on the basis of sex. However, 
Women were voting in some states before the amendment was way even passed. And for example, Wyoming granted and granted, uh, granted women full voting rights in 1869 and other Western states followed in the late 19th century. 100% boys like, oh yeah, I actually have a fact about that. Isn't that cool? Sorry, I just saw, the, I just, I mean, we have the newspapers and everything. 100% boys like. Okay, so, so even if you are a scouts person, this would be cool to have up in a room. These are what <laughs> boys lives looked like. It was this the is, scout magazine. This is an older one. Mm-hmm. And I think this is this is so cool. So it used to be Coca Cola ads on everything. It says all roads lead to the pause that refreshes. And this one is nineteen thirty six, and this one is November nineteen forty two. Look, that's the three for Scouts. Build, serve, and achieve. That one's cool. Build, serve, and achieve, and this is the three fingers. And that one's sixty one. I wonder what the um. This one's fifty seven. No, the um, the big papers are from. Oh, I don't know. Um, because it might be before. Yeah. But speaking about boys' life, it says good reading and good scouting. If you were a member, I believe, Steve, please correct me if I am wrong, um, you still got this patch regardless. Um, Ella, your friend's so funny. She said, so I want a $1,000 gift card, right? To where? Here. Oh. Because she got it right. Well. <laughs> Steve's so funny. I'll give you something. Where? Come in. You need a new stone for your collection, honey. So, again, please, Steve, correct me if I was wrong, but I believe if you were a Boy Scout and you were a person who ordered Boy's Life, you got this regardless of how long you were a member. It was just if you were a member at the time. Um, from 1911 to 2001, Boy's Life was still in production. You could still purchase and become a member mm -hmm. for them. And on the back it says ways that you can help that. It's so um, funny. We said we're getting away from it. I know, it, but, but you brought it up. It. I had to talk about it. Uh -huh. um, it they, they really tried to push it. They wanted you to uh, sponsor a boy to buy them uh, memberships every month. They also wanted you to have it in waiting rooms and in um, just like in your, around your house just so it could be exposed to as many boys as possible. Look, Babe Ruth, and it says, tell mother to make you cookies. That's so funny. <laughs> and she's like, all right, I'm going to show you a jamboree. A jamboree. This one is 1989, so it's not that long ago. Look at that. This is a jamboree. Looks jamboree. like um Look at that. Lollapalooza. It looks like a concert, I know. It looks This is 1989. This is a jamboree. Look at the size of that. I mean, it's a sea of people. This is the front. The parade yeah. that goes through. These jamborees were not a joke. Can I uh, see the back of that? Sure. There's a whole bunch of them. I like that. It says here, Fort AP Hill swings to scouting Jambo Jam. Midweek jam show draws a capacity. Crowd mm -hmm. last night is the sound of military bands uh, <clears throat> present, keeping the audience swinging, and a portion of assembled mass is shown and above a closer look shows how enthusiastic some of the show goes. You know, I, I look at these people and I wonder, the people who made this stuff, like the the the, the outfits, the outfits or the, the handkerchiefs, that's just one jamboree. Yeah. That's just one jamboree. That's guys. a lot of uniforms. That's to crazy. Make. Okay, so uh, go ahead with the the voting. Yep. Uh, the movement, the women's suffrage movement, began in the early 19th century. And included decades of protests and agitation. Tactics were included: passing suffrage acts in certain states, challenging male-only voting laws in court, picketing, silent vigils, and hunger strikes. Okay, I'm glad you're talking about that because this is a voting machine specimen ballot, Whoa. okay? Meaning it shows you how to vote, all right? So back then, because it's different back then. This is shows you how to vote. And what, what kills me is look, what, look at the shoes that are in the voting booth. Those are clearly kitten heels. They're kitten heels. Oh, look to the picture women. on the left. It's a woman. Yeah. So it's explaining to women how to vote. Okay? Or to anybody how to vote for that matter. But it, this is so cool because today they're not going to teach you how to vote. No, heck no. Mm -mm. But it tells you here how to, the council, all the different ways you can vote, you know, how to write it in, how to move the lever back then because it was a much different voting machine mm -hmm. back then. Um, and then it says... As no votes are registered until this certain lever is moved in a move to open the curtain, you can make any changes, as many changes as you desire, um, on, while the curtain is shut. Once you slide the curtain open, you can no longer make any votes. 
Wow. Isn't that a trip? But it's funny because what I thought was cool about this is that it goes right along with that. Yeah, it does. Because, and, you know, it's sad because voting, women started, was a, were able to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I believe that African Americans, black people were able to vote before women yes. could vote. And um, women, when they started to vote, Unfortunately, when they got the permission to vote, most women still voted their husband's vote. Yes. And um, that was something that happened for decades, and it still happens to this day. I don't know if you knew this, but at one point in time, for a very short period amount of time, due to that fact being so legitimate, mm-hmm. women would be demanded to vote first. To vote before like the if, men. If you showed up with your partner and you guys were both mm-hmm. voting, you would have to go first. Like, a woman in the U.S. often voted at a higher rate than men, and in every presidential election, single 1980s or were more eligible female adults have voted than eligible male adults. Right. Women are also registered to vote in higher numbers than men are. Yeah. Well, there's more women on earth than men, I believe. Uh, true. And also, mm-hmm. ten by 10 million more women register in recent years than men. You know why? No. Men, because women tend to be more conscious of mm. the, what's going on. Than men do. Seventeen percent of people in Detroit don't vote because they don't know how. Did you know that? They we need voting. Yes, they stuff need like that. This. But you know what? It's there's a lot of different reasons we need everybody to get out and vote. I don't care. Vote your conscience. We're not talking about one po- right polit- one political. We're just talking thing about after how another. voting makes a difference. That's voting right. makes a difference. Rather, regardless of how you vote, it makes a difference. One hundred percent. Um, and we need to make sure that we help those people who can't get vote to out to vote to vote. Because their vote could be that deciding factor. Rather, it's for president, rather, what? You just made me think of something. Keep going. Oh, rather it's president, rather it's uh, a prop, or, you know, just anything. If this helps for the residents of Michigan, our Governor Gretchen Whitmer is raffling off a couple thousand dollars. If you take a picture of you at the voting scene and tag her on Facebook and Instagram, she is? swear to God. She said, "If she said, I want my, I need my people to get out there and vote. And if you guys are, I will pick a silver, gold, and bronze trial and uh, tier. And you will." She said, "I will give you cash, cash app, Venmo, whatever you want. But I just need you to get out there and vote." You know, I understand that, but it's sad that we have to do that. One hundred percent. But like how it goes back to what I just said: seventeen percent of Detroiters do not vote because they don't know how, or they can't get there, or because they can't get there. That's mm-hmm. another thing. Yep. Yep. But. So- the, um, and then we have like all these fun election things because we don't carry anything current here. Um, we do carry you know vintage and antique um, pol- political and uh, voting things, United States things, uh, 20 years or older. So don't come in thinking you're going to buy anything that's current because we do not carry nothing that's current. Um, we just carry memories and the past. Yep. So something like this, which is the election of 1984, which was... Mondale versus Reagan. Wow. And it, this is the TV guide. Look at this. This is the TV guide, you guys. Isn't that hilarious? I love it. So I was 13. Nope, I was 14 by then. Um, and the U.S. presidential election special. Uh, but it's funny because look at Mondale. Look how unhappy he looks. Uh, that's why I was giggling Isn't because I was like, oh. Look at that. Isn't that funny? I love it. So this is TV guide, entertainment a magazine. This is Germany edition. <laughs> I just realized that. TV America, Germany edition. That's hilarious. So this is why, like, if you were an American citizen living in Germany, in 84, in 84, did the wall still, was the wall still up? <sighs> I believe the wall was still up. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. The Berlin Wall? Yes. Um, and because I think Reagan was president when it came down. So it was still up, um, I believe. Isn't that awful? Somebody tell me. No, because I literally have my. I just think about so many things I can just never. I know it's. I've got too much stuff in my head, but so if you were if you were like stationed over in Germany, right? Or if you were over there for work, or you just lived over there and you're an American citizen and you watched American TV, this is what you would get. And look, it has Winston's on the back. (laughs) I always make jokes that if you're gonna sound like a person who smokes cigarettes, Winston's are your go-to. 
But we can't forget our notable figures like Susan B. Anthony, who registered and voted for Ulysses S. Grant in the 1871 presidential election in New York, but unfortunately was shortly arrested, tried, and convicted in 1873. For voting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Victoria Woodhull also used her Wall Street profit funds to fund a newspaper that supported women's suffrage. And I can't forget, for everybody who stuck around, did you guys know that on this day... In 1969, Leon McLemon takes the world's most iconic photo of the Beatles walking across Abbey Road. That is literally one of the most world's most iconic photos to this day. I have two Boy Scout books that I have to show because they they blow my mind. Because even though they don't, I understand them. But you don't see them today. This is Cub Scouts. Cub Scouts, up to 11 years old, right? Mm -hmm. This is... Tricks, magic, puzzles, stunts, and games. I so love it's that. a book on how to do magic. Isn't that hilarious? I love it. So, also, because Boy Scouts were in every country, right? Here we have. What was that? 31 nations? 31 nations. Here we have. I just forgot the name of the language. It just flew Arabic, around. Hebrew. Arabic. Here we have one in You're I was going to say Aramaic. I was, I was like, why did you get so quiet? Because I, for some reason I keep wanting to say Aramaic, which is an older language <laughs> than Arabic. It's a whole, I don't know. But here's one in Arabic. It's Arabic. So this is a, oh look, it's got something in it. It's too bad. I is it like notes? It. it is. And I have no idea how to read it, but I love it when things are in books. Oh, wow. Right? I love things that are in books. Because you never know, you could find some secret stash of something. Oh, yeah. And I wish, I wish I could read it, honestly, because it might be a cool list that they needed. Well, it's probably the, one of the same ones that are they in have, English, yeah. that, but just translated it over. It looks cooler, honestly. But some of these graphics on these books, you, you guys, they kill me. Because this looks like a Nancy Drew Hardy Boys. This looks like a Hardy Boys book. Does that not look like Hardy Boys to you? And then you've got these great handbooks for boys that they're out in the... I mean, there's so much different things. Built-in skid chains on tires. Honestly, that's Isn't so that fun. I love it. And then it's got, I mean, I just love these books. It's This is history, you guys. This one is for Sea Scouts, if you're a Sea Scout. I don't even know what it's, oh, Sea Scout. Um, so, come in, take a look. We've got Scouts, we've got Scout stuff that just goes crazy. Yeah, up the wazoo, kind of it? honestly. It's already time to go. Well, if you guys enjoyed this Time Warp Tuesday like we always Actually, do. Actually, I did like this one. Me too. We had lots to talk mm -hmm. about today. We, we did. We hope you tune in next week for something a little bit different. Um, if you guys, again, have any ideas of what we could possibly talk about next week, please let us know. We are always open and sometimes, if not struggling, to find different and new exciting topics to talk about. So See, please. And we do have the knives. And the little forks and spoons. You would just so cool. That's a fork and spoon. Yeah, that's so cool. So um, the thing is, is we like to, in order for me to do the show, I have to tie into something we have here so sure. we can show you product and stuff like that. So we get a lot of things. Oh, do robots, do this. We don't have enough robots. Well, if I have robots, then I will do it. Otherwise, you just sit here and listen to us talk. And I know you love to hear us talk. Talk, right. But... Sometimes it's nice to show you things. Yeah, of course. And it always makes time mm -hmm. and uh, everything will oh. go by a little bit slower just when we can talk and show things as well. Why am I showing? What happened to my little thing? Your flashlight? Yeah. Do you want me to just grab you one? Please. So it's not like we're going to sit here and have tea or anything, right? We might. We might. We might sit here and have tea. But this is what's cool about these. Remember that, isn't that fantastic? That we have a whole bunch of the, these. Look at that. So it's all uranium, you guys. We got a whole bunch in. <laughs> so I just had to show you. Um, what else is going on? Make sure you guys watch us on YouTube. If you guys are frequent and fluent on YouTube, this will be available at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Or you can rewatch this episode as many times as you want as soon as we end. Mm -hmm. And um, shoot us some ideas. Yeah, please. I'm like honestly begging. Like we oh. we have ideas. We do. But. I want to make it different, and I also want to include our viewers yeah. and make them feel like we're You know, we're it's listening. so funny because we ask that on, on Caffeinated, we ask it on, but then for some reason nobody, I mean, even people, even podcasts or web series that I watch that have a thousand followers, you know, stuff, they never send stuff in. It's hard to it's get It's interesting. It. But um, we will talk about whatever you guys want to. We will... Um, 
show you whatever department you want to see. Yeah. Stuff like that. Maybe you want old school antiques. We'll do Hummel stuff like that, which is not worth a lot of money, but they're still fun. They're still cool to look at. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed this Time Warp Tuesday, and we'll see you next week. Bye, you guys. Oh, we're bumping into each other. I love how that literally just <laughs> happened. You guys see that? Car crash.